Welcome back, friends. For this next project, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So, we've been building some pretty wild stuff. We built the trebuchet, we built the downhill soapbox car. For this project, I wanna do something a little bit more mm, normal. I wanna build a chair. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Lehman, not a chair, a chair. How boring can you get? Well, I actually think building a chair is it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of different techniques we're gonna use. There's a lot of different tools we're gonna to use. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna to try to boil it all down into a maybe a three-day build. I'm gonna work quick. I'm not gonna stop and explain a lot of what I'm doing. I'll do some voiceovers here and there, and I'll try to take you through the whole process in three days. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a chair, and I wanna make a chair out of alder. This is a wood we haven't used yet in here. Alder is a nice wood. It's considered a hardwood, but it's actually fairly soft. It's easy to work with, and the best part about alder is it smells great. It smells like popcorn. Unfortunately, you won't be able to smell it, but I will, and I'll probably be commenting on it from time to time. It's a great smelling wood, has a nice look to it, like I said, and it's easy to work with. For this project, we are going to build a chair out of this book. This is called The Anarchist Design Book. It's a wonderful book by a guy named Christopher Schwartz who does really amazing stuff. The chair we build is going to look something like, find it here, like this. Only we're gonna build it instead with two stakes in the back instead of four. It's a very simple, simple chair. It's fairly easy to build. Everything we do will be built off of the template here that I made. You'll see me using it. We're gonna use a variety of tools. We're gonna use the table saw, we're gonna use the chop saw, we're gonna use the band saw. We're gonna be using the drill press. We'll be using the lathes. We'll actually be using the vacuum press to bend wood. This is kind of an exciting part. But I'm gonna take you guys along in the process. Like I said, this is gonna be a quick build. It should be interesting, you know, get to see a lot of tools and a lot of techniques. Let's do it. Our first step is to mill all the lumber that we're using to general size. To do this, I'm using the chop saw, then the joiner, and I'll also use the table saw, the band saw, and the thickness planer. Watch over the next minute or so and you'll see all these tools in action. I'm doing something kind of interesting. I'm cutting the wood on edge to make thin strips. After I cut them on the bandsaw, I'm gonna run them through the thickness planer. We'll come back and we'll glue these strips together and then bend them in the vacuum press. We'll be doing this at the end of the video. Okay, so we now have all the parts of our chair milled. We have the wood for our seats. We have the wood for our backrest, we have the wood for our legs, and then we have the wood for the backrest supports. So what we're gonna do to finish up the day today is glue our seats together and we are going to glue our backrests together. To glue the backrests together, we're gonna to have to bend the wood in the uh, vacuum press, which should be pretty interesting. I'll be using the pipe clamps to glue the seats together. Once I have the wood all laid out, I then went over to the joiner and I made sure the edges were really straight so they would glue together nicely. Then I took a pipe clamp. Actually, I took three pipe clamps. I put the wood on top of two pipe clamps and I used a spreader to spread the glue all around the edges, making sure I was totally covering the edges. Notice how I'm doing this on top of the pipe clamps. I have them both set up underneath the wood and I have them opened all the way. Once I have everything glued, I then took a third pipe clamp and put it on top. The next step is to take the pipe clamps and gently tighten them, moving from one pipe clamp to the next. I'm also being really careful to make sure that the wood is staying perfectly flat on the pipe clamps 
because I want to keep everything totally flat while I'm doing this. After I've gone through and tightened all the pipe clamps, I'm then going to check to make sure everything stays flat. The next step is to take the wood that I cut out on the bandsaw and thickness planer and glue them together in our vacuum press. So I'm going to sort through the wood first and make sure it looks the way I want it to look. Then I'm going to take yellow glue and I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to carefully spread yellow glue on every piece of wood. Then I'll stack them up together. After this, I taped the ends and then I put them inside our vacuum bag. This bag is hooked up to the blue vacuum that you see in the very back. I put our backrest in the bag on top of the form that I created, then I seal the bag. After this, once I have it sealed in the bag, I carefully align everything in the bag, pushing down to make sure it's gonna fit. I turn on the vacuum and then I push down. As I'm pushing, the vacuum is sucking air out of the bag and pushing the form down onto the press. This is pretty cool. Oh huh, guys, the vacuum press. It's a really, really useful tool. It does a lot of fun stuff. Well, I hope you learned something today. I hope you saw something interesting or learned something new. When we come back tomorrow, we'll be running the seat through the thickness planer. We'll be drilling holes in it for the legs and we'll work on the lathes. We'll um, cut the tapers or the tenons for our legs. We'll do a few other things as well. All right, I'll see you guys then.